Hello, everyone. My name is Lee. I'm here with my wonderful coworker, Mandy, to tell you all about our program, Pen to Power, Writing Letters to AAPI Heroes. This program is part of our celebration of AAPIHM, which is Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month that's observed during the month of May. I believe this year it's especially important to celebrate this community because of how much weight has been put on the AAPI population and the increasing amount of violence and discrimination against Asian American people that they've had to endure not just this past year, but historically. And this is why it's so meaningful for me to celebrate how much diversity and nuance exists in the community. We have so many different cultures and languages and people who are included under the AAPI umbrella, and it's worthwhile to acknowledge the people who have made an impact on our lives. We're incredibly lucky to serve a library community where people from all over Asia and the Pacific Islands have come together to form such a rich and compassionate community. And this program is to celebrate the vibrancy of the AAPI members in our local community too. And we wanted to give you a little bit of history behind AAPI HM. So Asian American Pacific Islander is a term that includes such a large group of people whose ancestry is from the continent of Asia and the islands of the Pacific, which includes Melanesia, Micronesia, and Polynesia. The Observance Month was made official by Congress in 1992, but the idea behind AAPIHM has been proposed well before the 90s. So it was inspired in part by a woman named Jeannie Chu, who is of Chinese American heritage and worked at the Capitol building in Washington, DC. Mrs. Chu approached Frank Horton, a congressman at the time in the 1970s, with the idea that Asian Americans should be recognized with a commemorative month. There was precedence before with Black History Month that was being nationally recognized in February, and Mrs. Chu wanted the contributions of Asian Americans to be celebrated as well. Her great-grandfather actually worked on the Transcontinental Railroad in the 1900s, which essentially helped build America. And she didn't want her great-grandfather's story and others like him to be forgotten. So now that we know a little bit about AAPIHM, how it got started, let's talk about what our Pen to Power program is. Thank you, Lee, and thank you for letting me take part in this inspiring program. The act of acknowledging that someone has been thinking of you or remembered you is wonderful. While many of us send cards for birthday gifts and special occasions, why not thank someone who has had a major impact on your life? For AAPIHM, let's think specifically of our Asian American Pacific Islander heroes. And that's what Pen to Power writing letters to AAPI heroes is. Who are our heroes? How do we write a letter to them? We'll also share prompts posted to social media, even give you a letter writing kit for pickup. And last but not least, we have a special guest. Our heroes can be a celebrity or public figure, someone you know as an acquaintance or even a close friend, family member, or loved one. Roughly 25% of Skokie is made up of Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. So just take a look around the community in your neighborhood. Lee and I are going to share some of our heroes with you. As far as public figures, I have a lot of heroes. And first up is Dr. Deepesh Navsaria, AKA Dr. Librarian. Dr. Navsaria is a nationally respected pediatrician, professor, and a children's librarian who has been actively engaged in early literacy initiatives like Reach Out and Read. I've been fortunate to hear Dr. Librarian speak in person. And as other youth services librarians will tell you, I am a huge fan of his work with underserved populations, public health programs, and kids in general. You might recognize Illinois Senator Tammy Duckworth. Not only is she an American politician, but she's also a combat veteran of the Iraq war and a retired National Guard Lieutenant Colonel. In 2004, she suffered severe combat wounds, which caused her to lose both of her legs and some mobility in her right arm. Senator Duckworth's resilience and dedication to the American people make her a true hero. Another true hero within the AAPI community is Kalpana Chawla, who was an American astronaut, engineer, and the first woman of Indian origin to go to space. Sadly, in 2003, Kalpana Chawla was one of the seven crew members who died in the Space Shuttle Columbia disaster. She was posthumously awarded the Congressional Space Medal of Honor. While regarded as a national hero in India, I feel Kalpana Chawla should be recognized as a great figure in the U.S. too. So that's why I've included her here. Thank you so much for sharing your heroes with us, Mandy. One of the public figures who's my hero is Arundhati Roy. 
She's an author and also an activist. She wrote the book God of Small Things, for which she was the first Indian woman to win the Man Booker Prize. And also she wrote the novel Ministry of Utmost Happiness. She's inspiring to me because she's also a political, environmental, and human rights activist. And I want to share a quote from her that she said while she was given the Sydney Peace Prize Award in 2004. And the quote is, there's really no such thing as the voiceless. There are only the deliberately silenced or the preferably unheard. And that quote is just so inspiring to me. Speaking of inspiring, as a children's librarian, I have a vast assortment of go-to inspiring authors for kids. When we were starting this project, I didn't realize how many fit within the AAPI community. These are just the first dozen who came to mind. I know I can add at least another dozen. You can access a list of these and other great authors on our library website. Okay, speaking of, of authors, Mandy, one of my other personal heroes is Mimi Thi Wing. It's a funny story because my older sister's name is also Mimi Thi Wing, but she spells her name M-Y-M-I instead of M-I-M-I. And so I always joke with my sister that Dr. Wen is actually the cooler version of her. Dr. Wen is one of my personal heroes. She's a writer, a scholar, and a professor, and she teaches at the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign. She was really active in the 90s movement, Riot Girl. She also makes a lot of zines. And so I actually got the opportunity to meet Dr. Wynn when she was doing a zine tour. And I was telling her that it's so inspiring to see someone of Vietnamese descent be so visible in like the punk world and also in the zine making world. Her advice to me was that I can also be that person. It was really great to hear that from one of my personal heroes. And Mandy, you have some personal heroes as well, right? Yes, that's awesome, Lee. I've been inspired by so many people in my day-to-day -day life, from my first childhood librarian to some great doctors and teachers. Many of these people are part of the AAPI community, but I really would be lost without my good friends. And Franny B is one of the best. She may look familiar because she lives and works in Skokie. And I'm so fortunate that we became great friends more than 15 years ago when her kids came to youth programming at the library. I've always wanted an older sister, and Franny is one of those special friends who fits that role. I'm so grateful for her unwavering friendship and equally constant sense of humor. Thanks so much for always being there, Franny. I'm going to be writing you a letter for sure. That's so wonderful that, that Franny is so, is so close to you. Um, and I want to talk about another person who's really close to me, my Aunt Yen. She is my maternal aunt. She's one of my heroes because she's so vivacious. And every time she's around someone, she always makes them laugh. And she's a really caring person. She's adventurous and athletic as well. She actually is a local champion in tennis and badminton in her hometown. And so that just shows how dedicated she is. And she's also really, really supportive of her own children. She's definitely one of my, my own personal heroes. And the picture is, is her with, with her, her husband, my uncle. I'm really happy that I got to grow up with an example of how strong women can be. So now that we've told you about some of our personal heroes, we wanted to jump into the letter writing process of our program. Yes, for those you personally know, you may want to format your letter as a thank you note or keep it conversational in tone. What a nice surprise to get a letter from a friend or acquaintance during these weird times especially. For public figures and those you admire but don't know, Remember to show respect by keeping your letter about a page in length, which is perfect for them to read quickly and not skip over. Introduce yourself and write about how you first heard of them and the impact they've had on you. It's okay to make it personal with a short story or anecdote. Making a connection or asking a question might make them more likely to respond, but you should never go into it expecting a response. With any letter, remember to be kind and thankful. Letter writing is truly an art form. We have a lot of books on letter writing at the library, including these three, one of which, Sincerely Yours, is actually a children's book. For more of these resources, we will link that in our website. Next, we're going to show you a couple of prompts to get started. And you might want to take a look at these as well as check back weekly on social media for more. And we, we mentioned at the top of the video that we have a special guest in this video. So we would like to introduce you to 
local creator Misha Gandhi. She's a wonderful artist who will be decorating some envelopes that will go into the letter writing kits. And she also was kind enough to record a video for us explaining her art process behind how she decorates her envelopes and stationery. So please enjoy the video by Misha Gandhi. Hello, I'm Misha and I'm the creator behind Art by Misha. The envelopes in your stationery kit were hand designed by me and just a small insight on what my business does. If you visit my Instagram page, you can see I send 100% of my proceeds to Dance Marathon's annual beneficiary of the year. I just wanted to thank you for picking up a stationery kit made by the amazing library and I hope you enjoy it and make amazing use of it. Moving forward, I wanted to show you some designs created by me which you can take inspiration by in your own creative style. Remember to be as creative as you want. Feel free to pause at any moment in the video to keep up. The design I am sh showing currently is henna. Henna is a popular dye used in the Middle East, Egypt, and South Asia. Some people use it on their hair, but a lot of people fill it up in a cone and draw intricate designs on their hands to reveal a tattoo-like design. I first took some paint and painted the back, and then I am taking a black sharpie to draw floral designs. There is no specific design I am following, it's just based on how you want the result to look and filling in the empty spaces. The second one I am designing, I included a minimalist design inspired by Ruby Kaur's poem. Ruby Kaur is an Indian Canadian poet who gained her fame from her short visual poetry. She has written books like Milk and Honey, The Sun and Her Flowers, and Homebody portraying beautiful realities. Her simplistic art inspired these minimalistic artistic designs she places on her books. You may trace the design on another piece of paper or freestyle it. These are just two out of many more designs you could create. Now I'm going to show you other designs I have created to take inspiration off of. Now that I'm done showing you some card designs, I want to introduce calligraphy. Calligraphy originated from China and was adopted by India, Japan, Tibet, and Europe. It is the art of decorative handwriting or handwritten lettering. It is a popular method used on cards. Some tools you can use are highlighters, colored pens, sharpies, markers, or basically anything. Again, there is no technique to these designs. Again, I want to thank you for supporting. I hope you enjoyed that video by Misha. We just want to say thank you so much for being interested in, in this program. There are many ways for you to share your letter with us if you'd like to. You can feel free to send us a copy of your letter at mycreation at skokielibrary.info where it may be featured on social media. And you can also submit to our community archive, the link of which is posted on the screen. Please feel free to sign up for a letter writing kit with envelopes from Misha, stationery, and other stickers to decorate your letter. Thank you so much. Bye.